Let's get weird into it. Number 10. The Living Statue. Imagine waking up. Sort of. Your eyes crack open, and you can see your room. The familiar pattern of the ceiling. The ominous silhouette of the chair in the corner where you throw all your clothes. The faint glow of your phone charger. Your mind clicks on. You're awake. You think, okay, time to roll over and check the time. Except you can't. You try to lift your arm. Nothing. You try to kick your leg. Still nothing. You try to scream for help, but your mouth won't open. And your vocal cords are on a coffee break. Welcome to the main event of sleep paralysis. It's that horrifying moment of cognitive dissonance where your brain is online, but your body is still in airplane mode. Your consciousness has rebooted, but the rest of the system is stuck on the loading screen. You are, for all intents and purposes, a fully sentient statue made of meat and anxiety. You can see, you can hear, you can feel the crushing weight of your own powerlessness. Your brain sends out frantic commands. Move arm, lift head, for the love of God, Breathe properly, and your body just lies there, completely ignoring the frantic screaming from headquarters. It's like your soul is a ghost trapped inside its own corpse, a prisoner in a bone-and-flesh jail cell it can't escape. Congratulations. You're now a brain in a jar, and the jar is your own unresponsive body. Number 9. The Brain's Emergency Break So, why does your body betray you like this? Is it a ghost? A demon? Did you forget to update your firmware? The truth is both way more scientific and somehow way dumber. It all comes down to a little thing called REM sleep, or rapid eye movement. This is the good stuff, the part of sleep where you have your most vivid dreams. You're flying. You're fighting a dragon made of spaghetti. You're finally telling your high school gym teacher what you really think of him. To prevent you from physically acting out these chaotic dream scenarios, and, you know, sleep punching your partner or trying to fly off the bed, your brain has a brilliant safety feature. It paralyzes most of your voluntary muscles. This state is called REM atonia, and it's a good thing. It's the neurological equivalent of taking the keys away from a drunk friend. The problem with sleep paralysis is that your brain messes up the timing. It's like a clumsy stagehand who turns the lights on before the actor is ready. Your consciousness wakes up, but the paralysis switch is still flipped to on. Your brain is essentially running two operating systems at once. Awake and panicking, and asleep and immobile. Tsamsoid. It's not a supernatural attack. It's a glitch. A horrifying, pants-wettingly scary glitch. But a glitch nonetheless. Your body isn't possessed. It's just temporarily out of sync. Leaving you fully aware that the emergency brake is still on while you're trying to drive. Number 8. The Shadow Person. Okay, so you're paralyzed. That's bad enough. But your brain, not content with just trapping you in your own body decides it's time to add a little spice. And by spice, I mean pure, undiluted terror. This is where the hallucinations come in. And the most famous guest star is the shadow person. It's often described as a dark, vaguely human-shaped figure standing in the corner of the room, at the foot of the bed, or sometimes right on top of you. It doesn't have a face. But you know, with every fiber of your being, that it's watching you. And it does not have good intentions. This isn't just your imagination running wild. Your amygdala, the brain's little almond-shaped fear factory, is in overdrive during REM sleep. When you wake up paralyzed and disoriented, your amygdala is already screaming. Your brain, desperate to make sense of the fear signals in the paralysis, does what it does best. It creates a story. It asks, why am I terrified and unable to move? The logical, albeit horrifying, answer it lands on is, because there is something terrifying in the room with me. So it projects one. It creates a source for your fear. It's the ultimate case of your brain gaslighting you into believing there's a monster in the room, just to explain why you're so scared. It's not an external demon. It's an internal production, a horror movie directed by your own panicked mind. Number 7. The Invisible Elephant As if being paralyzed and visited by a shadowy ghoul wasn't enough, many people also experience a profound sense of suffocation, a heavy, crushing pressure on their chest as if an invisible elephant has decided your torso is the perfect place for a quick sit-down. You try to take a deep breath, but you can't. Every inhale is shallow. Every exhale is a struggle. You are convinced you are dying, right there, unable to move or call for help. Once again, this is your brain being a dramatic idiot. During REM sleep, your breathing becomes shallow and irregular. That's perfectly normal. But when you're awake, your breathing is usually deep and controlled. During a sleep paralysis episode, you are conscious, but your body is still using its automatic, shallow REM breathing pattern. 
Your panicked brain detects this and immediately sounds the alarm. It interprets the shallow breathing not as a normal part of the sleep cycle, but as a direct threat. The sensation of pressure is your mind's frantic attempt to explain why you can't breathe properly. It invents a weight, a force, a malevolent presence holding you down, because that makes more sense to a terrified consciousness than the simple, boring truth that your diaphragm is still half asleep. Basically, your nervous system is throwing a tantrum in your honor. Number 6. Your Private Horror Film The shadow person may be the A-list celebrity of sleep paralysis hallucinations, but there's a whole cast of extras and supporting characters. The brain isn't limited to just one flavor of fear. Some people hear things. Footsteps creeping up the stairs, whispers right next to their ear saying, well, probably nothing nice. Others hear screeches, static, or a loud buzzing sound. Then there are the tactile hallucinations. The feeling of being dragged out of bed, the sensation of hands touching you, or the classic feeling of something sitting on your chest. These are all part of what are known as hypnagogic or hypnopompic hallucinations, fancy terms for dreamlike experiences that happen as you're falling asleep or waking up. In sleep paralysis, your brain is in a mixed state, a chaotic borderland between wakefulness and dreaming. It's taking real sensory input from your room, the hum of the air conditioner, the faint light from the window, and blending it with the bizarre, nonsensical logic of a dream. That weird creak the house always makes? It's now the sound of a creature crawling up your wall. That pile of clothes on the chair? It's now a hunched figure with long, spindly fingers. Your brain becomes a deranged movie director, using your bedroom as a set and your deepest fears as the script, all for an audience of one. Number 5. Waking Dream Logic Ever wonder why these hallucinations feel so ridiculously real? It's not like a normal dream, which you can often recognize as absurd even while you're in it. Sleep paralysis feels like reality has been hijacked. This is because, well, it has. Your brain is partially awake, so it's processing real information from your senses. Your eyes are open, receiving actual light from your room. Your ears are hearing actual ambient sounds. You are physically in your bed. Or why? The problem is that the dream-making part of your brain is also still active, and it's painting its surreal nonsense directly onto the canvas of your reality. It's like a faulty augmented reality app you can't turn off. You see the real world, but with an extra layer of nightmare fuel overlaid on top. This is why you don't question the shadow man in the corner. Your brain is simultaneously in a state of wakeful perception and dream state acceptance. It's the perfect storm for creating an unshakable belief that what you are experiencing is 100% real. Your critical thinking skills are offline, but your fear response and sensory input are cranked up to 11. It's the ultimate betrayal, your own mind using the tools of reality to construct your most convincing nightmare. Number four, blaming the demons. For most of human history, we didn't have the luxury of blaming a mixed state REM arousal parasomnia. Deo sum laut. If you woke up paralyzed with a monster squatting on your chest, there was a simple explanation. You were being attacked by a monster. Nearly every culture across the globe has its own folkloric interpretation of sleep paralysis, and almost all of them involve some kind of supernatural baddie. In medieval Europe, it was the incubus or succubus, demons who would sit on sleepers' chests for, uh, nefarious purposes. In Newfoundland, it was the old hag, a malevolent witch who would press the life out of her victims. Japanese folklore speaks of the kanashibari, which translates to bound in metal. These stories weren't just spooky campfire tales. They were the leading scientific theories of their day. They were rational explanations for a terrifying and seemingly inexplicable phenomenon. The feeling of pressure, the paralysis, the sense of a sinister presence, it all perfectly matched the description of a demonic or ghostly assault. So, when you're lying there, convinced a demon from the seventh circle of heck is using your sternum as a footstool, take comfort. You're not crazy. You're just participating in a rich, cross-cultural tradition of being absolutely, positively certain that a monster is about to get you. It's a human heritage thing. Number three, the nightmare recipe. So, how can you invite this terrifying experience into your own life? Well, it's surprisingly easy. There are a few key ingredients that make sleep paralysis more likely. Think of it as a recipe for a terrible night. First, the main ingredient, a messed up sleep schedule. Your brain loves routine. When you pull all-nighters, suffer from jet lag, or have a sleep pattern that's more of a Jackson Pollock painting than a schedule, your brain gets confused. The carefully choreographed dance between sleep stages falls apart. 
making it more likely for that REM, atonia glitch, to occur. Next, add a generous helping of stress and anxiety. When your mind is already marinating in a sauce of worry, it's more likely to trigger the fight-or-flight response, and your amygdala is already on high alert. This primes the pump for a fearful awakening. Finally, for a little extra kick, try sleeping on your back. For reasons not fully understood, the supine position is heavily correlated with sleep paralysis episodes. So, if you really want to meet your personal shadow monster, stay up for 48 hours, stress about everything, and then pass out flat on your back. Your brain will be happy to oblige with a complimentary demonstration of its most terrifying bug. Number two, the supine death trap. Let's dig into that sleeping on your back thing because it's a weirdly specific trigger. Why would a simple sleeping position turn your bed into a stage for a low-budget horror flick? While scientists aren't 100% certain, there are a few compelling theories. One of the leading ideas is that sleeping on your back makes minor breathing obstructions more likely. For some people, the tongue and soft palate can relax and fall back, slightly impeding the airway. This can lead to snoring or even mild apnea. Your brain, even in a half-asleep state, is smart enough to know that not breathing is, generally speaking, a bad thing. This subtle sense of suffocation could be enough to jolt your mind partially awake while your body is still locked in REM atonia. This kicks off the whole cascade. The mind wakes up, notices it can't move and can't breathe deeply, and immediately panics. The panic then fuels the hallucinations of chest pressure and a malevolent presence. It's a vicious cycle. Lying on your back makes you feel slightly more vulnerable and exposed, which could also contribute to the heightened sense of fear. It's the ultimate cosmic prank. The one sleeping position recommended to prevent wrinkles is also the one that's most likely to summon a chest-crushing demon. Number 1. The Great Toe Wiggle You're trapped, paralyzed. A shadowy figure is approaching, and you feel the weight on your chest growing heavier. Is there any escape? Or are you doomed to lie there until your brain finally gets its act together? For many sufferers, the answer lies in a strange but effective technique. Focusing all your mental energy on moving one tiny part of your body. The big toe is a popular choice. So is a single finger. The idea is that while the large muscle groups are completely locked down by rematonia, the smaller muscles in your extremities are sometimes less affected. By concentrating with the laser-like focus of a bomb disposal expert on wiggling just one toe, you can sometimes send a signal strong enough to break through the paralysis. It's like trying to reboot a frozen computer by repeatedly mashing one key. If you can manage that first twitch, it can create a chain reaction, waking up the rest of your nervous system and snapping you out of the episode. It's a desperate, tiny act of rebellion against your own brain. It's a reminder that even when you're completely helpless, sometimes all it takes to fight the monsters, even the ones your own mind creates, is one stubborn, determined wiggle. That's all for today. I'll be making similar videos in the future. Subscribe to see them.